So let's get started with uh, chapter 13, uh, which uh, addresses non-structural components and systems. We use the uh, shorthand uh, uh, NC, uh, uh, SC for, uh, for these things sometimes, but in general, uh, people like to refer to them as non-structural components. Uh, the uh, emphasis on non-structural components uh, uh, really, uh, for all intents and purposes, starts uh, maybe in the late 50s, early 60s in terms of our building codes, but uh, this subject actually goes back quite a ways, and uh, uh, I've had the privilege of getting up close to the uh, Parthenon in uh, Greece and have seen uh, the anchorage details used to attach uh, uh, appendages to that structure. And the Greeks were very good at this and they used uh, not only uh, uh, iron uh, uh, for these anchors, but also in some cases copper uh, that was uh, sheathed in lead, which was a pretty sophisticated way of uh, making those types of force transfers. More recently, the emphasis on non-structural behavior was uh, focused on parapets uh, in masonry construction uh, and in many earthquakes uh, uh, around the turn of the century, that is between the 18 and 1900s, there were uh, a number of events where uh, parapets failed uh, and the uh, falling brick uh, uh, injured people and damaged property and killed people. So. There was a fair amount of uh, effort expended uh, in the construction of these buildings to try to anchor those uh, parapets and anchor the walls back to the uh, to the roofs of uh, of the buildings, and a variety of anchor types were used for that work. Uh, more recently, San Francisco, uh, the city of San Francisco, had uh, uh, issued a parapet ordinance. It was one of the first mandatory non-structural type of uh, ordinances put in place. Uh, so that buildings uh, had to uh, secure their parapets uh, one way or another uh, to prevent that type of damage. Uh, this is uh, a slide showing uh, the uh, type of damage that was addressed by the San Francisco Parapet Ordinance. It was from the Long Beach earthquake in 1933. Uh, and you can see that the, uh, uh, let's see if I can bring the pointer down here. You can see that the uh, falling rubble uh, was right over the entrance of this building. Junior high school where people would have been trying to exit the building. Uh, more recently, in the uh, earthquake in Christchurch in 2011, particularly the second earthquake, which was more damaging, uh, there was an awful lot of masonry damage uh, in the downtown area. And you can see uh, again this type of classic uh, parapet failure uh, where the roof uh, diaphragm tends to knock the parapet right off the uh, top of the building. Uh, they had retrofitted a lot of the buildings in Christchurch, uh, but nevertheless, they had a lot of this type of damage. You can see more of it here. Uh, this brick was uh, dislodged from the top of this building. Uh, and again here, uh, and again, you can see the classic case where the roof diaphragm actually acts as a battering ram to drive this uh, material off the top of the building. So parapet damage uh, gets a special focus in ASC 7. It gets its special mention uh, right up front in Chapter 13, and that's why. Uh, more recently, uh, it's become clear that non-structural damage can take many forms, uh, and in uh, hospitals in particular, this is a, a real difficult thing when you have uh, an operation of a hospital that is otherwise functional as a building. Uh, but is impaired by the fact that the equipment has all uh, been dislodged and, and fallen over. Uh, in uh, just regular office spaces, uh, not just in hospitals, but elsewhere, uh, this is a very typical type of scene uh, where the uh, uh, cabinetry in the hospital or in the building has been uh, uh, overturned, and when there are desks and people nearby, these things are, uh, are not trivial. I took this photo in uh, Christchurch uh, about a week after that second event, uh, and uh, it was just uh, striking to me how uh, serious the disruption in an office space can be. Uh, and if you look closely at this photograph, you'll see a guy, a guy left in a big hurry and, and left his shoe behind. Uh, you can imagine the uh, uh, level of uh, uh, 
uh, panic that uh, ensues when uh, things are flying around the room like that. Uh, beyond architectural components and parapets, uh, we have equipment uh, to deal with and uh, typical equipment rooms um, often involve a lot of uh, piping, uh, a lot of uh, components that are bolted to raised equipment pads, uh, and also things that are attached to the walls. And uh, these types of components all need to be addressed uh, appropriately not just from a force standpoint, but also from a deflection standpoint. 